Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a call tied, on which no one has sat. Lose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they lose it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing, losing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down the leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So good to have the opportunity to come and share with you again today. Let us remember that the grace of God redeems and repairs our lives. It's Palm Sunday, and today we encounter Jesus afresh. He's on the road towards the cross. Unless we're careful, our mission will be driven by our desire to peep up with what's popular in our culture. But all that's been stripped away. Be grounded in the one who transcends popularity and culture. His name is Jesus, and today we celebrate him. Don't make your faith a fad or a phase that you're going through. Easter is fast approaching, and for many of us, it'll be a very different Easter time. Our churches are empty. People aren't gathering as they used to all because of COVID-19. But stop. Take some time to reflect, to listen, to read God's word, to pray together and to celebrate Jesus. God always has a better way, a better plan, a better outcome. Let's turn to his word today. Our message is based on John chapter 12. 9 to 19. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man that Jesus had raised from the dead. People are attracted by hope. People are attracted by good news. And isn't it great at the moment to have those good news stories popping up on our TV screens and social media? People love the miraculous. People love the interesting. Come on, come on, let's go and see Jesus. Let's go and see Lazarus. Then the leading priests decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. Don't underestimate the power of your story, the power of your testimony to point others towards Jesus. Picking it up at verse 12, the next day, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept throughout the whole city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail! Hail to the King of Israel! In just over a week's time, friends, those same people who were shouting, Hallelujah, here comes Jesus, will be shouting crucify him. Today they celebrated his arrival, soon they'll celebrate his death. How quickly we can change our tune. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling a prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem, look, look, your king is coming. Riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. 
But after Jesus had entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Verse 17, many in the crowd had seen Jesus calling Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they'd heard about the miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, there's nothing we can do. Look, look, everyone has gone after him. Friends, God is waiting on us to focus on Jesus again, to encounter him afresh this Easter season. Have a greater awareness, have a greater understanding, have a greater experience of meeting with Jesus. Here he comes. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 18. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait on him. God cares about you. God sees and knows your need. Brenda and Terry were going out for the evening. Last thing they do before they go out is put the cat out. The taxi arrive, they bundle in the car, but the cat scoots in behind them. Then Terry goes inside to chase out the cat. Brenda, not wanting to let the taxi driver know that the house was going to be empty, says, oh, sorry, my husband's just gone to um, say goodnight to my mother. Several minutes later, an exhausted Terry arrives at the taxi, blood dripping from his arms. Sorry it took so long. The stupid idiot was hiding under the bed and I had to poke her a few times with a coat hanger to get her out. Then I grabbed her by the leg and flung her out the door and she scratched me. An oldie but a goodie. What place does Jesus have in your life today? How important is he? Do we want to celebrate Jesus' arrival? Or are we wanting to join the crowd and watch him die? Hanging there upon a cross but not fully realise the importance and power of his death. A death like no other. In Proverbs 11:6 we read, The righteousness of the upright delivers them but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. Let's not miss out on what Jesus has for us. Don't be trapped. Don't be uncertain, but be sure and celebrate him. Encounter him today. God has an urgency in his heart for people who are far away from him to come near let us point the way with our choices, our lives, our message. Be deliverers of hope. Be deliverers of faith and life and truth. God has an urgency for you to be found. For you to become a follower of Jesus. He did all he could. Because Almighty God cares about people. God cares about you, God cares about me, your family, your friends, your situation. How are you following? Don't just wave those palm branches and shout the hallelujah. Be real and sincere, for our God is a God of second chances, third chances. Come back to him this day, for he is full of grace and mercy. Come to me. He's calling to you. When we make the decision to follow Jesus, we are completely forgiven and completely made new. 2 Corinthians 5 encourages us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. We are no longer 
who we used to be. We are made new. We are restored. We are forgiven. We have new life. Remember that God forgives us and allows us to move beyond our doubts, beyond our guilt, beyond our regrets. We don't have to let the past hold us back. How is God using us? How is he using us in these days as a church community? Support one another. Pick up the phone, send a text, write an email, check on your neighbour, check on that elderly friend. Use Facebook, watch our YouTube, share links, connect with one another, care for one another in your homes. I know with all my heart, God is still God. His word is still alive. His death and resurrection still has the power to transform. God is still speaking to us as a church community here in these days. We can be a voice of hope. We can be a voice of encouragement. For here comes Jesus. Let's celebrate him. Let's encounter him afresh over this next week. God bless you.